when we have oscillatory motion, we can describe it by this function. The displacement x from some equilibrium point would be a function of time, and it's equal to the extent it can go, or its amplitude, that's how it's the farthest it can get from its equilibrium, both plus and minus. And then an oscillatory function, we can choose cosine, and then the argument would be some frequency, which we're going to use the angular frequency to um, make sure our units inside the cosine are radians, um, times the time, and then plus what we call phase constant, given by the Greek letter phi, with a, a zero subscript. And this describes where we're starting our time. Okay, so if we imagine a block on a spring. Here's my spring. Here's my block sitting on a table. Let's just assume that the table's frictionless to start. So all we have to worry about is the force of the spring um, pushing and pulling on that block, causing it to oscillate side to side. If this were the equilibrium point, and we chose to the right to be our positive, then this block could oscillate back and forth around that point. The spring could have a spring constant k, and the block would have a mass m. Now our goal is to try and understand this equation. Uh, how can we look at the motion and explain, okay, well, what's, what's, how do we describe it mathematically? What's this equation saying? So to start, let's just assume that we take this block, pull it over here to um, some position, and let go. And at the point, at the moment we let go, that's when we start our time. So let's try and graph that motion. What would it look like? So if we have a time axis, and we have a displacement axis, okay, then at t equals zero, at this point right here, where would it be? We've taken this block, we've pulled it to this position over here, and as soon as we let go, we start our time. So as soon as we let go, we start our time, that's right here, and we've pulled it, so some positive distance over here. So we can put a little dot there, okay? And then when we let go, what's it going to do? Well, the spring has been stretched, and so the spring's going to pull it back towards equilibrium. Okay, so we know that springs always try and um, uh, pull towards equilibrium. All right, so we know it's going to come closer to here, so it's going to go from a positive value of x towards zero. So it would come down here, and as an oscillatory function, it's going to follow kind of this cosine. It's going to speed up and go faster and faster as that force keeps applying that, that um, as the spring keeps applying that force until it gets to this equilibrium point and it's now at rest. But now it's moving, so it's going to overshoot. That block is now going to push backwards um, onto the spring, compressing it, which slows it down until it reaches some point over here. Okay, so it's going to go to our negative position, slowing down until it stops at the maximum point it gets. So it gets to a point down here, and that, given that the sy system is symmetric, the amount it, it um, energy it gave it to get to this point is going to lose it to get to this point, and so that's going to be the same distance here. So this is our positive amplitude, or our, 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 our the, the maximum displacement is equal to our amplitude and positive, and down here it's negative. Okay, so our amplitude is a is a positive number. We can either and we go between plus and minus a. Okay, now it's just going to continue doing that, and assuming we don't lose any energy, it would just keep oscillating between that positive a and that negative a. Okay, so we have a fairly comfortable understanding of the amplitude a. This block will oscillate between positive a and negative a according to the cosine function. Okay, so now our goal is to try and understand more what's going on in here. Okay, let's focus on this phase constant. The phase constant basically describes how does it start, when do we start our time.
Okay, in this particular case we've chosen, we pulled it all the way and let go. Well, this looks awfully like a simple cosine function, just cosine of omega t, because I'm starting at maximum amplitude, which means my amplitude is multiplied by 1. The cosine can go between plus and minus 1. So I'm having the, the amplitude times 1, and it's going to end up at the amplitude times negative 1. So at t equals 0, I end up with 1. So at t equals 0, I get um, cosine of omega times 0 plus b0 equals 1. So that's just simply cosine of phi 0. So what is phi 0 if that's 1? Phi 0 would have to be 0. Okay. So in this case, phi 0 equals 0. Cosine of 0 gives me 1. Alright, so this was a fairly simple case. In this case, my, my phase constant is 0, or in other words, I start at my, at my standard at, a, at the maximum positive displacement. Well, there's all sorts of possibilities. I could have started at any point. I could have got, pulled this to the side, let go, watched it oscillate for a bit, and then started my stopwatch when it was at a different position with a different velocity. And our question is, how do we find this V0? Okay, there's two ways we can go about it. And one is ref looking at this as if um, it was being um, motion along a circle, our standard circle, with our x position just simply being the shadow of that circle on the x-axis. So we're going to try that next.